BYU Sports Nation continues live from Studio B. Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan here, and we welcome in the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rebell, who joins us to, I guess, just you know, bask, 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 bask yes. yeah. in this wonderful, yes. amazing win by BYU over Baylor last night. It may be cool and gray and soggy outside. It's oh, a beautiful morning. Warm. It's a beautiful morning. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. So you're basking in the warmth of this victory. Yeah. Uh, Greg, so many great moments last night, so many great numbers and trends that BYU kind of broke after the last three games. So let's just start with that kind of all-encompassing question. What were your favorite moments and stats that you take from last night's game? Well, I, I, I really want to focus on defensive stats because, you know, although BYU was winning games recently, there was some slippage and, and the vibe wasn't quite right. They were winning, but, uh, you know, it, it kind of felt like they weren't maybe themselves or, or how they like, weren't like, let's play like us, let's be us. And they got back to being them, it felt. You hold Baylor to, to 37 and 34 in two halves, a 71-point night. That's a low number for that Baylor team. And, um, you know, they, they're, they're so expert at winning games in which they outshoot the opponent. You don't win games against Baylor when they outshoot you. And Baylor outshot BYU last night. And it was the first time in 93 games <laughs> that they outshot an opponent and did not win. Well, how does that happen? Wild. Opportunities. BYU got 15 more shots up, courtesy of great ball security, only seven turnovers, and a ton of offensive rebounds. They've got 34 offensive rebounds in the last two games, Wild. 41 second yeah. chance points in the last two games. Now, they lost one, 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 but it says the energy is there. It says the hustle is there, and they are grinding for opportunities, which is what you need against a team like Baylor, and they got them. And, and then when, when so many of your opportunities are turning into three-point attempts, you know, BYU takes 36 and, and shoots in the high 30 or, and shoots in the high 30s. Baylor takes 20 and shoots at 25 percent. Well, well, there's your ball game. BYU will win that game if they're going 14 for 36. They're going to win most yes, of those games. Yes. That's kind of a wheelhouse game for BYU. And 14, by the way, is the most they've made in any Big 12 game yet this year. The most I think since the Wyoming game in, on December 30th. So this was a high water mark for BYU. But again, showing they don't need to be they don't need to be 45 percent. If they're in the in, in the in the mid to high 30s, they're going to win a lot of those games. In fact, I think they're now 17 and two when they shoot 33 percent or better. That's one of every three. That's not crazy. Not crazy. It's good, but 17 and two when they're at 33 percent or better. When they lose games, they're in the high 20s, yeah. low 30s. Uh, but last night's the kind of game that BYU is going to win. So as many good things happened offensively, I just love the defensive effort, and it just felt like it was back. Like there was just. There was an engagement. It felt like like what happened in Stillwater was kind of, if not necessarily needed, they 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 built off of it, and it said, you know what, we're gonna we're not gonna have that just be a a, a down note and something we have to live with. We're gonna build off of that and take that moment and learn to play better because of it. And I think they did last night. You'd like to win both Oklahoma State and Baylor, but if I told you you only win one, I'd take Baylor over <laughs> Oklahoma State because BYU made that a quad two by being a top ten team. So in the end, that was a, a really Nice turnaround from a tough yeah. loss. And maybe BYU wins last night because they lost on Saturday. Perhaps. Because of what got addressed during the week, right? Um, because, again, it, if you got slippage but you're winning, it's not as urgent as if you got slippage and you lose a game you're not supposed to lose. It really kind of increases the urgency. And so maybe one begot, begat the other last night. And I really do think that what comes up next, which is Saturday in Manhattan, BYU has a much better chance to win that game now because of two things what happened last night which proved to them we're still good we're still really good and yes. what happened last saturday because last saturday it was a lower tier team early game maybe one they kind of thought we've got and who think you know you don't take anything for granted the big 12 but maybe it creeps in a little bit but what happened saturday plus what happens last night i think really helps byu at k-state and i think there was the notion that last night kind of again showed the guys Man, we're really good you know, l let's remind ourselves that, that just, just how good a team we can be by beating a team like number 11, Baylor, one of the best teams in the country, one of the best offenses in the country comes in, and, and the Cougars looked just tremendous. And, and as Ali Khalifa went, I think went BYU last mm -hmm. night, too. Um, you know, Coach Pope, one of his objectives for last night was let's get Ali going again because Ali felt ready to go yeah. again, and you could see it. And you fought, felt it, and you saw it in the numbers. Um, I, I really do think that's a great sign. If, if Ali is back, so to speak, and last night testifies to that. What a great weapon to have for the stretch run. And like his brand was on display too. Like everybody next to him was watching Super <laughs> Disney. It was like, this guy's awesome. He's a unicorn, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, I like Mike Boynton called him the seven foot point guard. No offense to Dallin Hall, but he says, you yeah. know, he handles it enough to, to kind of be like that guy out there. 
And uh, I mean, come on, seven assists and no turnovers last night <laughs> with his 14 points and seven Four rebounds. Four threes. I mean, Dre, Ray J. Dennis has the ball the whole night for Baylor. He goes eight and two. Ali goes seven and zero. Oh. By the way, Ray J. was the only player with an assist for Baylor last night. Why the only player? I didn't know. So. so so the eight assist he number is low for Baylor, really low for Baylor. But just one guy had assist. Mm. Um, and, of course, BYU spreads it around pretty well. That was the I, Jazz I, I just, for 20 years, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I just love it. I, I, you know, and, and Ali's game last night, it was moments. You, talk to, you asked about yeah. moments, right? It, it was moments. You know, BYU's down eight early. Ali bangs a three. Um, it's a tie game late in the first half. Ali hits a three. And then right before the half, another three to push it to seven. Then Baylor takes a lead in the second half for the only time. What's the very next play? Ali gets Noah. Yes. You know, on a wide-open layup. And then... Um, you know, Ali hits a pick and pop three from Dallin Hall. That was his last scoring, in fact. Ali scores his last bucket with 14 14 to play, but his impact was felt moving forward. There's one of the most beautiful plays. In fact, I want people to go back and watch this if you can. Just go to your ESPN app and get the game from last night. Go to 733 left in the game. It's a beautiful play in which Ali has the ball on the right wing. Richie Saunders oh, yes. runs a fake pin down and even signals like I'm going to set a screen for yes, Dallin Hall. Yes. Slips off it, whoop. loses Caleb Lohner, and goes to the rim, and Ali, boop, boop. And yep. it's just, it just such a beautiful play, and, and it was orchestrated so perfectly. And then the last assist Ali has is a little handoff to, to Trevin for a three. There was a huge three late mm -hmm. to push it to seven. So yep. Ali's moments were big. When BYU needs a bucket, either coming out of a timeout or an early crucial moment, it's going to be Ali finding somebody, probably for something that looks kind of easy in the end, which it isn't, but it, they make it look easy. It was that pass to Richie Saunders that uh, Scott Van Pelt showed last night with Stanford Steve that prompted Stanford Steve to say, he's my favorite player in the entire country. It was that <laughs> play, and it was gorgeous. And it shows the versatility with which BYU operates, because yeah. BYU runs that, 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 uh, runs that look and runs that, that, that motion where, yeah, you're going to pin, and then Dallin's going to come up and curl. Instead, Richie just you know, fakes it, cuts to the hoop, and Ali, boop, and it was just, uh, yeah. Beautiful moment. It's just beautiful basketball. It's just fun to watch. And uh, BYU at the peak of its powers now with a real tough stretch, obviously, at Kansas State. BYU 2 0 in game twos, by the way, with the opponent. Hopefully it's 3 0 on Saturday. At Kansas, historical opportunity. TCU at home, tough game. Uh, and then, of course, at Iowa State, going to be tough. You hope you beat Oklahoma State. The hope is BYU avoids a three game losing streak all year. So far, so good. They've been able to rebound really well coming off of losses here and there. Yeah, and, and you're sitting at seven and six with five to play. You're two wins away from a 500 record in the Big 12 in your first year in this league. You're three wins away from a winning record in the Big 12 in your first year in the conference. You've got two home games left. But if you can beat Baylor at home, you can, with the same effort, hope to beat TCU and Oklahoma State at home. Well, those would be your two and get you to nine. And, and, and if they find one on the road somewhere, I mean, granted, K-State and uh, rather Kansas and Iowa State haven't lost a home game yet. Mm -hmm. um, so K-State's the one maybe you target a little bit. But again, after last week in Stillwater, it's the great lesson, right? You don't target anything or expect anything. But if BYU can find one on the road, take care of business at home, suddenly you're looking at a winning record in the Big 12 in their first year in this conference. And again, you can't look too far ahead with anybody in this league one game at a time. But right now, 7-6 and six is a great place to be. At the very least, BYU is putting itself farther and farther away from play, having to play a Tuesday game in Kansas City is what it comes down to. Yes. So you've got three teams that kind of look targeted for that game right now in Oklahoma State, West Virginia, UCF. K-State could be that, that, that fourth team, that, or at least the separation becomes greater if you get the sweep of K-State because then you have tie breaks over K-State and UCF. And, and so the farther you can push yourself away from that bottom tier, the more you avoid having to play an extra game in KC, put yourself in that top 10. I think in the first season in the Big 12, being a top 10 team, getting a first round bye uh, in Kansas City, uh, what a great way to start uh, your tenure in this conference. Spectacular. Well, you've yeah. heard the stat that we just presented. I did. That all but guarantees that BYU is going to have success in the NCAA tournament. And the, only one, I can to the only one I can guarantee is that BYU will be in the NCAA tournament yes. based, <laughs> based on my Ken Palm stats. So uh, I've and got these Ken Palm data, archival things that go back and that prove that BYU will absolutely be in the NCAA tournament because they were yes. a, ten, a, a Ken Palm top 10 team on, on February 1st. And every Ken Palm top 10 team on February 1st has played in that year's NCAA tournament since the Ken Palm ranking. Book it. Anyway, so they're in, right? Yes. So Omaha, <laughs> to they're Omaha in. we go. Come on. Now, <laughs> to it, Pittsburgh we it's go. It's just a question of, yeah, the seeding and where. And let's say the BYU does win nine games in the Big 12, and maybe they get a 10th win by winning a game in Kansas City, and, and they win one at the Big 12 tournament. 
I mean, is it is it too crazy to think that the Cougars could legitimately be playing in Salt Lake City as a five seed at that juncture? Yeah, I, I think probably five is your cutoff to be there. Um, but I, I think I think if you end up at 500 in the Big 12, you're probably looking at a favored seed in the NCAA tournament, which means seven or better. Yeah. And I think first year in the Big 12, I, I remember sitting down with you guys before the season and 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 you know postseason play. Some kind of postseason play mm -hmm. is a great place to start. Well, it went from some kind of postseason play to now, well, NCAA looks like it's going to happen. Then you go from there to, could you be a favored seed in the NCAA? And then it goes to, could you be in your backyard in the NCAA? It's all in BYU's first year in the Big 12 for the team picked 13th in this league by the coaches when the season began. Yep. Wild. Pretty awesome. It is amazing. It's been such a wild ride. So fun. And it's a peaks and valleys thing. And, yeah, they, they just went through a bit of a valley last couple of weeks. Um, you know, escaped with a couple of wins, took a hard hit in Stillwater. But, you know, what came of it? I think what came of it was last night. And hopefully even better nights to come down the stretch. It has been such a blast. Oh, Big 12 is so much. I mean, every time we sit down with Mark Pope in postgame, uh, and, and, they've, and they've won a game, mind you. This is not his attitude after losses. But after a win, there's just this smile and this exhalation. <laughs> and it's like, is this league crazy or what? And we're, we're, we're succeeding in it. It is just the best feeling. It is yeah. the best, man. Yeah. Thank you for basking with us on this winning I'm happy Wednesday to bask. In the lights of studio. So much meeting. basking going on. <laughs> no, Thanks, it, it is so much fun what's going on right now. And Cougar Nation is fully on board. How about the sellout last night on Amazing. a Tuesday night? Amazing. 17,978. And every coach and player that comes in from these Big 12 teams, go yeah it's a big 12 i mean it's a big 12 gym it's a big 12 crowd it's as good as anything out there uh, everyone says it everyone believes it everyone sees it that's the great thing is this is being spread you know across the country what's happening in provo it's a special thing great awesome. stuff thanks yeah. greg anytime